This video is sponsored by World of Warships. More on them later. Welcome to video number two of my solar-powered Boston Whaler project. In the first video, I bought this crappy old 13-foot Boston Whaler hull and refurbished it. That involved a lot of grinding off old gel coat, putting fairing compound on all the holes, and adding a lot of new fiberglass to all the thin areas. This boat had previously been repaired a lot of times and those repairs were failing, so there's a lot of filling of old holes, grinding out weak areas, and just reinforcing stuff. Then I gave it a fresh layer of gel coat, and with that it looked almost good as new. So then I was left with just a bare hull, but I needed motors for it, so that's what this video is about. I'm going to build dual electric outboard motors based on these underwater brushless e-foil motors. These are made for those e-foil boards that you see zipping around the lake. I'm going to be making the main body of the motor out of 2x4s, and to get those down to the right shape, I'm machining them with my Stepcraft M1000 CNC router. This is a two-sided machining operation, so the machine does one side, and then I flip the workpiece over and it does the other side. Probably could have done the same thing with a belt sander and a saw, but hey, this leaves us with a really nice, precise shape. After that, I trimmed off the excess stock and sanded down some of the little ridges that were left over from being held into the workpiece. Then I just manually drilled some holes for the motor mounts. And speaking of the motor mounts, I also made these on my Stepcraft M1000. They're made out of quarter-inch aluminum plate and I'm cutting them with an eighth inch end mill. The Stepcraft is perfectly capable of cutting aluminum like this if you just go really slow. It's not the beefiest CNC machine in the world by any means, but if you take it really slow and easy, it does just fine. So these turned out really well. Then I both glued and screwed those uh, motor mounts into the two by fours. This piece here is gonna be the leading edge of the outboard, and it's 3D printed out of PETG. I specifically chose PETG because it does not absorb any water like PLA does. I used Gorilla Glue to attach that and clamped it down, and then sanded off any glue that protruded out. Then to cover up any holes, I mixed up some fairing compound and smeared that into all the cracks. Once the fairing compound was dry, I sanded that smooth, and ended up with a pretty hydrodynamic shape. But I'm also going to fiberglass over this later. Now, I'll admit, my boat doesn't have much in common with a 14,000 ton warship, but that doesn't mean I don't love playing World of Warships, who is the sponsor of this video. World of Warships is a free-to-play game that is available for PC. It has top-notch new graphics and more than 40 unique maps. They even include dynamic weather, water effects, and textures that make the game's seas virtually indistinguishable from the real ocean. There are multiple ship classes to choose from so you can conquer the oceans aboard battleships, destroyers, aircraft carriers, or cruisers. And if you like to go deep, you can even be a submarine. They have new content released every month, whether it be new ships, in-game nations, cosmetics, or even ship classes. You can always count on enjoying fresh gameplay experiences in World of Warships' massive 12v12 arenas. Through December 15th, World of Warships is running a treasure hunt where you can win real life and in-game prizes just for playing and inviting your friends. The game is also available on consoles. Click on the link in the description to get a huge starter pack and use promo code BRAVO to get 500 doubloons, 1.5 million credits, 7 days of premium account time, and 1 free choice of ships after you complete 15 battles. See you on the battlefield. Now back to the video. These pieces here are 3D printed end caps for the motor to make the, the motor more hydrodynamic. And I want to uh, put epoxy kind of around them, so I'm painting them with PVA right now. PVA is a mold release agent. So then I screwed those onto the motor mounts, and then just started painting everything in epoxy. Not everything, just the wood and the, the 3D printed leading edge. Once it was pre-wetted, I started laying on 6 ounce fiberglass. The main reason for glassing over it is just kind of to hold the 2x4 onto the leading edge so they never pull apart. After the epoxy cured, I gave everything a good sanding to smooth it all out. Moving on to the pivot mechanisms that will allow these things to pivot back and forth for turning. I printed these all out of PETG with a super thick uh, wall thickness, so they're very, very strong. Here's the top pivot cap for the, the very top of the outboard. These things have some heft to them. They're, uh, they're chunky, very strong. So those just bolt on to the 2x4, as shown. I had some leftover gel coat from the boat hull repairs, so I added some methyl ethyl ketone peroxide to catalyze it, mixed it up, and then painted it on the outboards, mostly just covering the fiberglass. After that cured, I sanded it down smooth. I just had a little bit of white and a little bit of blue left, so I just kind of used what I had. I wasn't really going for aesthetic here, just for a smooth, durable surface finish, so with, with the blue one, I sanded it down to get it smooth, but there was white underneath it, so it uh, shows through, but, but I'll just call this a contemporary grunge aesthetic. So here's the, the top pivot part again, that just slides onto the top part of the 2x4 
and then bolts into place just like the lower one. My 3D printed design here has captured nuts, pretty slick. That little weird uh, kind of four sided star shape you see there is for a piece of 2020 aluminum extrusion that'll be the kind of the steering push rod you'll see later. So here I am cutting some 12 millimeter steel rod. That will be the, the pivot. And here's putting a nice big bearing into the, the pivoting part, or actually that's the fixed part that stays on, on the boat, doesn't move. And slide the rod through there. And there we have a big strong hinge. Nice. Next it's time to install the e-foil motor. These motors are made to be run underwater, but I'm still a little skeptical. So I, th I think these are just gonna be my freshwater outboards. And then I wanna build some, some separate saltwater outboards that have the motor above water. And there's, there'll be a drive shaft that goes down to a bevel gear to run the prop. So that's probably gonna be a project for this coming winter. But for now, just for the initial test drives of this boat in Lake Washington in the freshwater, I'm just gonna use these submerged motors. So I Loctited some M5 bolts and bolted the motors onto the motor mounts. The phase wires just route through the hollow leading edge here. That's why I wanted to 3D print it and not make it out of just solid wood. And then those wires go through the pivot point and come out the side of it, as you can see. Leaves a nice clean wire routing. And then those little blue motor end caps kind of bolt back on to cover up all the wires and make everything more hydrodynamic. It's turned out pretty well. I was quite pleased. There it is pivoting back and forth. Golden. Love it. Here's the 2020 aluminum extrusion going into the top part of the pivot. And I chose that to attach the control horns to so that I can add different types of control horns. Like I could add a manual one for steering the motors manually, like a dinghy or I can uh, use a steering servo. Here's the motor drivers that I'm using. They are the Vesk 75 100s, and uh, they come in an aluminum box. This was not the best choice. I'm gonna upgrade these at a later date. You'll see why. But here I am just kind of trying to seal this aluminum box to keep water out, just using uh, silicone sealant for that. The motor drives just screw directly to the top of the outboard. And then I plugged those into the Vesk tool and set it all up to run on PWM. And the propellers spin. Amazing. Here I am cutting some plywood on the step craft. These are the side plates that hold the motor onto the transom mount on the boat. Here's all the cut parts. Love that step craft. Here's a big crude robotics servo that I found on Amazon. Um, these things are actually pretty cool. I'll put a link to it in the description, but they cost about 80 bucks and there's a big old brush motor and they're just kind of like exposed circuit boards um, and then a gearbox in the, the big metal chunk on the bottom. But I built an enclosure for that. I'm just using it as my steering servo. These things are cool because there's potentiometers on the PCB where you can control the, the speed and the throw. I think they have a maximum of like 300 degrees of throw. So much more than just a 90 degree standard servo, but you can all control that just with these little two trim pots on the board. So I printed out a big old PETG housing for that and routed the wires through a little grommet, put a bottom on it to keep water out. And here's a little, uh, a little shaft hub going on the eight millimeter shaft. Um, remember that, cause that becomes important later. And I screw on my PETG thick, solid printed control horn here and testing it with a servo tester. And that it works pretty well. By the looks of it, it ought to steer the boat just fine. Here's the wood bits attached to the outboard pivot. So the two outboard motors are going to attach to this big two by four. And this two by four is going to be on a hinge. So the whole thing can pivot up so I can pull the motors up out of the water if I need to. Here I am screwing on the end plates. So the transom on this boat has been repaired a time or two, so it's not exactly geometric. So it took quite a bit of uh, trial and error and test fitting different transom mounts. So I printed these just out of uh, thin, like crappy PLA. Um, and then I eventually got the, the whole spacing right. So then I printed this super thick giant one out of solid PETG. This is like the biggest thing I've ever printed. I think it took like two and a half days or something like that and it ended up weighing like 2.5 kilograms. So it is a beast. It chewed through uh, like two and a half rolls of PE or spools of PETG, just a monster. But I think I'll need all that strength to hold these two motors on there because they create quite a lot of thrust and they have a lot of force. So I need all the strength I can get for this part. Damn, <laughs> this thing is a brick. I'm using door hinges from Home Depot for the pivot point. And uh, so far they've worked pretty well actually. There's drilling holes to mount all the hinges onto the two x four and screwing those all in place. There's the final transom pivot mount all put together and installing it onto the back of the boat. 
It just slides onto the transom. And then there's two bolts that go through on either side to hold it there. Here it is, all put on, pivoting. Look at that, amazing. And it seems pretty strong. It can hold all my weight. Now it's time to attach the outboards. So those just bolt on with two bolts that go through the, the wood, plywood bits. And the propellers are going to be pushing way down below the center of rotation here. So there's a long lever arm. So to help uh, bear some of that force, I'm adding these arms to the bottom of the outboards that push on the hull. And these will actually be where a lot of the thrust is being transferred into the hull through. Without these, I would be really concerned about the door hinges just ripping out of that transom mount. So that helps distribute the load. And then there's control horns going onto the outboards and screwing on the big 3D printed servo onto the 2x4. There's cutting some uh, threaded rod. This is for the push rods that go in between the servo and the outboard control horns. There's one on each side and I have nice big ball joints on those. And here's testing the servo. Works great. A+. Plus. It's a little faster than I need it to be, but it should do the trick. So here lies the beginning of our big propeller adventure. These e-foil props that came with it, um, I actually don't think they're e-foil props. They're just like generic outboard motor props that came with these motors. And they're pretty crappy. They're cast aluminum, and they have these uh, rubber kind of rubber spacers in the middle that actually attach it to the shaft. I think they're supposed to be self-centering, but they were terribly out of balance. Mainly not because the, the propeller itself was wonky, but because that rubber piece was never centered. It was, it's not concentric. So I had to balance these propellers, and I did that by adding tape to, to random blades and just feeling the motor as I would run it up. If there was vibration, I would move the tape to a different blade and just trial and error, figure out which blade was too heavy and which blade was too light. And then whenever I figured out where the weight was off balance, I would then take the angle grinder and grind material off the opposite blade. Damn, that is smooth. So then eventually I arrived at a perfectly balanced prop and they were spinning really, really smoothly. And I also sanded that down with sandpaper just to get it super smooth um, because the angle grinder was kind of rough. So in air, these propellers were absolutely perfectly balanced. Like, they were so, so smooth. Okay, we'll come back to that later. But moving on to printing a bunch of accessories for all the electronics. Got my uh, Creality Ender 5 S1 Plus going here. Got the Snapmaker CNC router laser cutter printer printing over here. Got so many printers. So this, this is going to be the box for the autopilot. Um, this is just printed out of PLA. But here I am uh, screwing those together and gluing in the autopilot. I'm just using a simple old little PixHawk 2.4.8 or whatever it is. Gluing in a HERE2 GPS uh, receiver and a little telemetry radio. And also my Spectrum RC controller. Yeah, this is basically just going to be a giant RC boat. Here I am unboxing these giant AO Lithium 12 volt 100 amp hour um, LIFE PO4 batteries. Damn! Ho oh, ho! That's a big boy. They sent me two of these, so thanks to AO Lithium for hooking it up. And these are going to power the boat, for now at least. I have a lot of different batteries that I'm going to try, but um, these are the first ones that I got. These are typically used for like RVs and uh, camper vans and stuff like that. So I printed this big tray out of PLA and then put the actual packaging material that the batteries came in into that tray. And that gives a, a nice solid base for the battery so I can just throw them in and out of the truck and not worry about kind of, you know, impacts. So I got some nice cushioning on there. There's 3D printing a honeycomb, uh, way over-engineered piece that will hold a bunch of electronics on the transom. In this box here, I have a 250 amp circuit breaker, a DC power reducer to keep the voltage at 24 for the servo. And then right here is a big current shunt for this power meter right here. So I can see my power and power consumption and voltage and stuff like that. Once I got the autopilot all configured, I did a test with the remote controller. And as you can see here, I have differential thrust set up and the steering servo is also steering. So there's, there's two modes of steering. Um, you can see one propeller slows down and one speeds up as I turn left and right. Dual redundancy here on the steering. Um, we'll see how that works when we take it out for a test drive. Might change it, might not, but... And that's it! Ready for a test drive. So exciting. Ready to go. All hooked up to the truck. And you tow it down to the lake. Putting this thing in the water for the first time was so exciting because I had spent all summer working on this boat. It was way too much work. I know this doesn't seem like much, but <laughs> this is so amazing. 
<laughs> oh my god, it, it's very sensitive on the controls. Like just little tiny inputs on the stick will, will move the motors a lot. And the differential thrust works so well. I just did a perfect 180 degree pivot turn away from the dock over there. That was awesome. I'm so stoked right now. Oh, this is excellent. We're cruising at a little over two meters per second right now. And uh, my biggest concern so far is that this servo control rod is vibrating quite a bit. Um, I'm guessing that's just because the props are out of balance, even though I balanced them as best I could, seemingly. Um, but yeah, that servo, I'm guessing, will fail eventually because the gears will just get fatigued to the point of the teeth wearing down since it's just vibrating so much. But I don't even know if I need steering servo, honestly. I might just be able to get away with differential thrust entirely. Worst case scenario, I got an oar. <laughs> that would suck, though. I'd have to paddle back. It, we're doing 690 watts to go 2 meters per second. Woo-wee, look at that. We got a seaplane just taking off. It is a smoky day out here on Lake Union. Got some ships over there chilling. Pretty neat. Oh no, my power just cut out. What? What happened? Oh boy, we got a seaplane coming into land now. Hopefully it doesn't land on me. <laughs> oh, that sounds like a turboprop. Oh, it's so close. Sick. And touchdown. So I've kind of started to try and tune this thing. I should have bought a waterproof laptop. Whoa, that came down fast. Those motors sure do vibrate more than I want them to. Look at that, there's my same exact boat. Except not made out of RC plane parts. <laughs> Damn, it's a pirate ship. Wowee, look at that boat. I'm surrounded by really nice boats. I'm going into this uh, calm bay over here to do gyro cow. My gyros are all screwed up because I initialized them on bumpy water. That is a big one. Wow, look at that catamaran. Damn, that thing is slick. Holy crap, I wonder what that person does for a living. Aha, uh -huh. it's really calm in here. <laughs> Nice, I found a little cave. I could just keep my boat tied up right here forever. That'd be great. So I was really bummed that even though the propellers were perfectly balanced in the air, they were vibrating quite a bit underwater. So I think that uh, that rubber in between the shaft and the actual prop itself is made to flex so that the props are kind of like self-aligning. So even if they're perfect in the air, then they'll be different in the water. But before I tried to balance them myself, they were still out of balance in the water. So there's really no winning with these props. They're kind of just crappy in general. I'll have to make my own. That didn't really work. I'm still getting a bad gyro health warning. So I'm gonna go to a dock so that I can uh, put the autopilot on the dock to calibrate the gyros there. Ardu Pilot has a rule that says you're not supposed to use the software with manned vehicles. So of course I would never break the rules. I'm just using uh, a different flight controller software that I won't tell you what it is, but it's definitely not Ardu Pilot, I promise. Holy cow, there's another one. There's a public dock underneath that bridge over there. So that's where I'm headed. So I tied up right to this dock that says you're not allowed to tie up. And now I can just take the flight controller here and Oh, the wires don't reach. I had to disconnect the power wire, but now I'm just powering it off of USB. So let's calibrate this thing. Now I've got a basic waypoint mission uploaded, so I'm going to try it out. Let's uh, raise the throttle a little bit and then put it into auto mode. Oh, where's it going? Where's it going? Oh, there we go, it's straightening out. <laughs> Whoa, okay, okay, that's not okay. Wow, it is turning like crazy. And now it's spinning me in circles. This thing is, something's very wrong. Something's very, very wrong. Ah, oh, cool, the bridge is going up. It's for that sailboat that needs to get through. Oh my God, this servo stripped already. Look at that. That was a beefy servo, I can't believe it. Now I'm just driving at home manually by moving this, but I just realized that it wasn't the gears that stripped. It was just the hub came off of the shaft. The set screw came out, so I gotta resecure that. Those things are just straight up freaking ships. Look at that. Here comes a big wave. Woo! Oh, got some sea spray, damn, damn. That bird found a really big dead fish. I almost hit the hot tub boat. It's Loctited, but it sheared the set screw. 
That's how much torque there was on this thing. <laughs> I need something a little bit beefier than an eight millimeter shaft. Like I said before, these servos are capable of 300 degrees of rotation. So what I'm gonna do is turn up the rotation amount from 90 degrees to 300 degrees and then print a three to one gear reduction for them. So there'll be uh, less torque on that little set screw that holds the shaft hub onto the shaft. Got a big old thick bearing there. And then to do this, I'll also need a new housing. So here's the new housing, I'm screwing it together. I printed this overnight, screwing the servo in place. And here's the big gear with the control horn built into it and a big old girthy bearing that just snaps right in. Actually, there's two of those bearings that go on either side, but that goes in place. And then the gear control horn um, kind of just slides on the PLA. So I'm using some lithium grease on there to reduce the friction. And then we have the pinion gear that goes on the shaft and the hub and those mesh together. I'm using herringbone gears. Here's adjusting that little potentiometer in there to increase the throw and the speed of the servo and screwing on that pinion gear. It's also 3D printed just out of PLA. Threw some nuts on there. And here's a test. Look at that. Boom. Perfect. Got 300 degrees of rotation on the servo, about 90 degrees of rotation on the control horn, and it's plenty fast for a full size boat. So then it was back out onto the lake for another test drive. So this goes to show how amazing 3D printing and rapid prototyping is. I got off the lake yesterday at about probably 3 p.m. and it's 9 a.m. this morning and I already made this uh, 3 to 1 gear reduction on the servo. That should hopefully prevent um, that weak little set screw from backing out on that 8 millimeter hub shaft right there. Nice job, Captain. <laughs> Still flying kites at Gasworks, that's cool. These e-foil motors are rated for like 3,500 watts, but so far I've only been able to get about 1,500 watts each out of them. This is because the motor drivers I'm using are too small and they go into thermal foldback really quickly. And also to get the full 3,700 watts of power out of these things, you need to run them on a 20S LiPo. That's 84 volts. And uh, I only have 12S LiPos, so I need to find a 20S battery before I can test how fast this boat will really go. We're pretty far from home and we're having motor issues. We're gonna have to uh, improvise here. So I turned off differential thrust. Now I should just have steering with the servo only. This is great, we're, we're going. It's just a slight offset in the servo and we're going straight. How good is that? Now let's just cross our fingers that the other motor doesn't break. Oh, the bridge is up again. Look at that. Amazing. Even while cruising at only like 300 watts, um, that thing was still getting pretty hot. So maybe that's why that one broke. Not sure. A little update. Now suddenly, both motors are working again. I just let it kind of sit there for a few hours and now they work. So maybe it was in some sort of a thermal foldback mode where it had overheated. So that's pretty much it for this video. In the next few videos of this project, I will continue to tweak and tune things and make improvements and also just spend some time out on the lake and enjoy the rest of the summer and have some good adventures. So stay tuned. And then this coming winter, I'm going to add the big giant solar panel wings on the side that fold out. So that should allow me to drive for days on end. I'll leave you with this little driving montage of putting around and having fun on the lake. And that's pretty much it for this video. Thanks for watching. Bye. All in the same boat. The same boat we're rolling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. All in the same boat. We sink or swim. Together, we all wanna have fun. Together, we all wanna live forever. We all wanna be friends, all in the same boat. The same boat we're all in, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. All in the same boat. We all want to sail away, drift away, celebrate, ride the waves of work and play. Let's all say hey, 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 yeah, all in the same boat, ha, ha. the same boat we're all in, yeah, 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 yeah. We don't 
don't want to have trouble. No, we don't need any more trouble. We just want to get along and cruise peacefully. Sing our songs all in the same boat. One big boat Like Noah's Ark All aboard All in the same boat What a great looking boat. Gee whiz, I love my boat. <laughs>